guess what? He's still thriving. If I had set money as a, as a purpose, I would have shut it down because I don't make any money from that. But I pay the guys who run it. I'm able to get people off the street. And I have a small one in Lagos. I'm setting up one in India. So that's what social entrepreneurship preaches. You know, you feel need of society, but you do you do that by doing business. And we say that in Nigeria, I think that our issues will be solved by entrepreneurs. When entrepreneurs start to stand up to do the right thing, so they make money, but they also uh, actually feel societal need. I mean, the other way to describe that is uh, truly doing what you love to do. You're happy, society is happy, and at the end of the day, you make money. That's social entrepreneurship. It doesn't mean CSR. CSR is a side job. You know, somebody in the department is a C. So we, we put 0.0005% of our, of our profit into helping society. Maybe making a ball hole that doesn't work tomorrow. You know, <laughs> those ball holes actually start off. I work for a company called uh, Lucas Rice. It's Century uh, Beverage, but we own Lucas Rice in our engine. We want to do water projects in Africa because if you look at their message, their corporate message is um, actually water for life. They make spirits, uh, they make drinks, they make CSDs. So they say we take so much water out of society, let's deliver water to society. So we want to do something in Africa, and the typical thing they do is to put power So I said to them, no, we're going to um, train 10,000 Africans over five years to become experts at generating water and making money from making water. So the CEO said that they never had this kind of idea before. So they said, how am I going to do that? I said, we're going to partner with three uh, business or four business schools, uh, Gibbs in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We're going to camp with Strathmore. I don't know whether you guys know camp quite well. Strathmore, they are affiliated to Lagos Business School. We go to Ghana, Chelsea like, Business School, and then LBS Lagos. And we get young people to say, how do we go to a village in um, Fiditi and train 20 young people how to get water off the ground, purify the water, sell the water to the community, and everyone is happy. That's the kind of thing I said we need to do. And um, I, I think if I had said let's make some boreholes, you need to buy a generator to power it. Okay? You need to battle with the community chief for who controls the water. You need to battle with local government. They, they probably need the money to do it themselves. But I said let's train people to make water. And I also um, I follow um, uh, Trent in Nigeria. And I, I, I do have a couple of friends who work in all the industry, at very high levels. I grew up in the Delta. I grew up in Potaka. So I used to say to them uh, when they complain about insurgency in the Delta, I said to them, if 30 years ago you did your business slightly different, maybe the, the narrative of your business there will be different. Businesses were set up to provide and fulfill societal need. That's what we set up business to do. So businesses have this social responsibility. And they do deliver it. But over time, capitalism takes over. And capitalism is about self-interest. Let me make as much as I can. If we can introduce something called enlightened self-interest, you know, knowing that I make all the money from this society, so that means I have to deliver something to this society. Uh, I don't know whether you guys know, someone wanted to build a refinery for $10 billion somewhere between mm -hmm. Ondo and Open. I don't know whether you guys follow that. It's not politics, so we don't follow it. No, we all follow it. <laughs> So he's ready to break ground, and the chiefs show up and say, the community leaders and the kids, you know, the young, the youth, you know, so what's in it for us? The guys say, we'll provide jobs for you. Oh, no, that doesn't pass. What's in it for us? You guys know who I'm talking about. He got upset. He left the, the plan. He said, go to hell. You come here to make money, okay? Uh, what we want is that you can train 20,000 engineers out of the society. Maybe they went over the top, maybe. Uh, but typically, we start business to fill a need, societal need, social need. Over time, we be off. But I think the future will start to change that. Okay, because, you know, I worked as a CEO. You know, you earn a salary, something called Parkinson's syndrome. You earn 10 million, you want to earn 50. You never stop. At some point, you ask yourself, do I really get satisfaction from what I do? The business I do today, I love it. I love it because it's helping me learn Africa. That's number one. Number two, I'm also helping change the trend in Africa in so many places. When you go to some African countries to do business, they have a, they have what you call consultant. It's not corruption, by the way. So if you want to get something off government in some countries in Africa, which we don't know, which we think are better, 
So someone shows up on the consultant, so you walk through him, you pay him officially, and then he pays someone. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go direct. I mean, Shola, Shola knows me, I go direct to help me. I mean, some of them said I put them off, but I said that's the way I want to do it. So what I, the reason I love what I'm doing today is um, I have a chance to actually challenge the Antodox that I have to go to a consultant. Number one, I also have a chance to challenge the Antodox that an African cannot run this African business. You know, it happens everywhere that you don't have an African running it. So the idea of social entrepreneur, I think is the beginning. It's just starting to uh, kick in. It hasn't come here yet. We have a couple of things happening here. I was following uh, what they do at the uh, Fake Foundation. I was following uh, a couple of other organizations. But I think the future belongs to the guys who are going to think about longer term perpetual sustained profit. Deeper with organizations that have deeper meaning to society and the guys who run it. Than the guys who make profit, you know, that really just delivers to the shareholders. So who probably buy the next private jets and the society goes down for it. I mean, uh, I, was, uh, I speak to a couple of governors and I say to them, that some of the companies in Lagos actually have generators that can power the whole street sites in Lagos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why you guys see that. Yeah. Yes. Some of them do have. Yeah. And they have this funny CSR department. So I said, why don't they say, while I do my business in Lagos, I'm also going to be the guy that champions security provision in Lagos. So I power all the street lights. And I pay for it. And I train people on how to actually light up the streets. Because you're already in energy. You're already in energy business, so why don't you go to that exit? It's not CSR, it's not painting a school. Things about CSR is momentary, so you paint a school, or you send someone to go study stuff, but you're providing security, which is enduring, or you're training people how to provide power, that's enduring. I think that's, uh, that's in a nutshell what that uh, implies to me. If you read the book, try, you can get a bit of a way you can relate it to organizations. If you also read Michael Potter, you can see where he says that in the next 20 years, Organizations have no choice. It's either they go that way or they be forced by society. Mm. Um, 15, 20 years ago, you could set up a factory anywhere. You know, I lived in Ibadan 1994 to 96. You could go set up a factory, you know, at uh, Luyole or something. Today, if you walk up to set up a factory, people show up and say, what's in it for me? I don't know whether you follow what Sam Miller did in our nation. They set up a factory and I'm rusted government bought 20% of the shares and they gave it to them. And that's why they have no problem sitting there. So many other companies walk in, they do have a problem. What do they say to an unrusted government? We're going to double your money. If you put in 10 naira here, you get 20 naira in four years. So put in your money. Instead of you collecting tax from me, put in one. Because here is my business model. We're going to be successful. So they showed the books. So they let them come into their society. So no one goes to attack them in that place. Because they're, they're actually um, feeling a need. Because Anambra doesn't have a lot of money. Individuals have money, but the state gets $2 billion from federal and pay $1.8 That's the way companies have to start to make them feel. I think that's, uh, that's in a nutshell, uh, my, uh, 